In today's video, we're gonna be installing the KBD front bumper on the 240. Now this is gonna be quite a challenge for me because I can't stand having body lines that are all over the place. Now I know a KBD front bumper is not the best and it's not gonna fit that perfect. I know that, it's just that's just the nature of it. But I'm gonna try my best to get it to fit as close as I can to OEM. And the whole reason I didn't go with a authentic BN front bumper is just because my car is really low and I actually drive my car everywhere I go. And this is what I mean. So this gap is pretty nice. It's nice and uh, even. And I know with the KBD it's gonna be a little off. So I'm gonna try my best to get it to be symmetrical on both sides and be nice and tight. Yet, yeah, I can take it off quick. First step is obviously going to be removing this stock front bumper. I didn't film the whole process of taking out the stock bumper. Um, it was kind of a hassle just because this bumper has never been removed. But um, just in case anyone is wondering, there's five millimeter nuts right here, five right here. There's four like screw clip thingies right here on the bottom. There's two right here on this side, two right here. This is where you open the hood, this is what you see. And then what I didn't know was there is four under here, under like the little, not the mouth, but under here. Uh, and there's just a little bar that goes in the bottom. So I didn't know that, but I got the KBD bumper on uh, just to kind of test it out. And it it is as, like really flimsy and I know a lot of people talk trash on it because it's flimsy. So uh, yeah, I got my side skirts on just to see if it actually flows nice. Uh, Cause these are BN style side skirts. These are fiberglass. So I don't know if they're gonna last, but this is a BN style uh, front bumper. So right now I'm probably gonna head to McFadden a local hardware shop, and um, try and get a bracket. That way I can make a bracket because I use the factory bumper support, and it does not work at all. It's bolted up where it should be, and it's bolted up over here on the bumper. And you can see how big the gap is. It's like I want to say maybe an inch and a half, and yeah. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing is, um, I remember a while back seeing this, that someone got a, an angle iron piece like this, so I'm going to try the same thing for the top support because like I mentioned, I want to be able to take this bumper on and off because with how low my car is, 17s up front and all that, um, it just it hangs really low and I know I, I do drive this car more than I should, not, not that I sh shouldn't drive it, but uh, this is like my weekend car and I almost daily it in a sense. So there's a lot of driveways that I go up, like really steep ones and stuff on my daily routine. So that's why I want to be able to just pop it up and take it off. So what I'm thinking is if I have this bracket, um, this is the smallest one I could find that wasn't huge and the ones that were smaller than this were way too small. So I'm gonna end up having to cut this one. I believe it's 36 inches. So it's gonna bolt up right here to the factory mounts and then the bumper is just gonna slide on top of here. So it's gonna just get caught on this little lip. So hopefully I could just slide it on top, call that the top a day, and then now the sides, what I'm thinking is get some bumper quick release buttons somewhere over here, probably mount them up right here where it's the stiffest on the fender, where it's still nice and sturdy. And then I'm thinking maybe zip ties on the side, that way I could just carry a pack on me and just rip them off or cut them off. Um, so that's what the game plan right now, but the fit, the first thing I have to do is get the top to mount up nice because I know I was having issues with the headlights hitting right here, so I'm probably going to have to cut all of this out. So once I get the top on and the top is nice and the gap is nice, then I could focus on wrapping it around and doing all that because there's no point of wrapping it around and everything and the top's all wavy or just messed up. So right now I'm going to cut this up. So I'm slowly getting there, but the problem that I'm running into right now is the bar is too far back. I already drilled new holes forward and pushed it out more, but when I close the hood, it's slightly touching it and the gap isn't consistent. And it's like a little bit under the bumper. So um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to work on right now. And the corners are a lot higher, which makes sense because the bar is straight and the car has a curvature to it. So I could trim these down, these are no problem. But the main issue is it's gonna hit on the headlights, at least I think, right there. So I'm gonna have to trim that and then this fitment right here. So that's the thing I'm battling with this car, well this bumper at least, is I want it to look good, but I want everything to function as OEM. Now, I know when you do aftermarket stuff, your OEM stuff is not gonna work, this and that, yada yada, I know that. But that's why I'm kinda challenging myself and trying to get it to you know, work all as OEM, 
my highlights can go up and down. Another thing is my latch is harder to open now. I could still open it, but it's harder to open with this bumper on. I don't know why that is. So I just got back from SoCal Accessories and I got these quick release buttons. So I know a lot of people, uh, they use like these little, they look almost like this and it's two of them. One goes on the fender, one goes on the bumper and then there's like a rubber band. But personally, I feel like that just looks like, um, like tacky and just cheap. This isn't the best either, but it's gonna look a little bit more sleek just because it's gonna be this, this is all you're gonna see. It's gonna go somewhere here or anywhere really where you want. And pretty much what it is is this rod that I dropped is gonna go somewhere in here and it's gonna stick out. And then you're just gonna push it on like that and it's gonna clip on and that's gonna be a bumper. And in order to take it off, you just push the button and it comes off. So um, that's why I was mentioning earlier that the top is just gonna slip on the sides. I'm gonna push a button, it's gonna come off take the zip tie off and then do the same on the other side and it should be off quick. Conveniently, this car has a bolt right here. I don't know why it's not right there. That is holding on the fender um, to part of the core support. So I'm gonna take this bolt out and I'm gonna be putting this little rod. It comes with two nuts, one that goes in the back, one that goes in the front that we could adjust how far it sticks out or how far it sits in. Uh, so I'm going to try to put it here, and just by looking at it like this, it's going to stick out more than enough right there. So if anything, I'll be able to even push it in more, um, and I could probably still use it to both secure this and fasten the fender with that. So I feel like that should work, um, so now I'm going to just try to do that. So the hood fit me here, looks pretty good from a distance. But up close, um, I still need quite a bit of work. So right here, it's very tight, and then you can see it opens up. So what I think I'm gonna do is bend the tab on the middle, bend it down a little bit, and then on the edges where I cut it, bend it up, that way it kind of wraps around. And then another thing I noticed, um, this is just probably with all aftermarket bumpers, but especially with the KBD, the hood measures right here, I think I measured it like 30 inches, and this measures, I think like 30, 30 inches and a half or something like that. So it's a little bit um, bigger right here. That's why it, I was running into the headlight issue. So um, if you look at it from a distance, it looks like it flows, but it's just a tiny, tiny bit off. And you can tell right here, um, probably like a quarter of an inch here, quarter of an inch over here. And that bugs me. So I think I might just um, not cut it all the way, just try to sand it down and see if I could sand some material away. That way it kind of flows and looks a little better. But regardless, um, I already mentioned this a bunch of times, when you run a bumper like this, you're not really running it to have OEM fitment. You're running it more to not break like a uh, OEM type X bumper or to break a, um, a super like nice fiberglass bumper. I got the side right here a little better. There's still a gap right here. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing I said over here. I'm gonna sand the top down, sand some material away because this is already touching and this isn't even close to touching. Same with down here. But for now, um, I got this is the, it's not supposed to be like this, but I just got it just to like kind of hold it in place. So um, it looks pretty good. It's just right now, um, since it's like not melting, but it's getting really hot, it's like sagging a lot. So that's why it looks like that. But this should be picked up a little and this should be down a little. So it's not exactly like this, but it's it's similar to this. So another thing I think I'm gonna do is cut this little upper tab away and just zip ties in the bottom because right here, this part is like, it's not even close to, you can see right there, it doesn't even wanna get on there. And uh, that's kinda what's making it weird. So you can see this line is uh, not straight at all. So probably gonna trim some away from right here or send it down and then send some away from up here. But overall, it's looking very good from a distance from over here. So this is gonna be my weekend car, my low car, so it does not need to be like OEM fitment. I just want it to be as close as I can to OEM fitment. So now I'm just gonna drill those holes on the side that because that's I noticed that's helping it kind of shape it and figure out where it's gonna be. All right guys, so I got the car on the street. I just threw the bumper on. I still have to do the zip ties, but before I do the zip ties, I want to adjust uh, the quick release buttons because you could adjust them. You can make them stick out more or be in more. And I think this one is pretty good. It looks like it's being pushed in quite a bit, so I might push it out a little. 
And then this one looks like it needs to be pushed in. Um, or it's not connected. No, it's connected. Yeah, I just gotta push this one in. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah. This bottom piece is really annoying because it's literally touching the ground, but it's just one of those things that I can't really complain because my car is low. So it's not the car's fault, it's more like it's my fault. But you can see this one is sticking up a bit, so I gotta push this in. Um, yeah, the top, honestly, I didn't even fix it. You know how I told you guys I was gonna fix it? I didn't fix it at all, and it doesn't look that bad. I didn't show me installing the side skirts just because I don't think anyone really cares, but uh, these are, I believe, Durflex BN style side skirts, and I got them for free from a friend. So um, I just decided to throw them on. They are kind of beat and the fitment is nowhere near good. Just so I would have something so it wouldn't look weird with an aggressive front bumper, no side skirts and no rear bumper. So me personally, I feel like this is good enough. I like aggressive front bumper and aggressive side skirts and stock rear bumper. I don't know why, but it gives me like that bumper cut effect, even though it's not a bumper cut. But yeah, that's the only reason why I got these. I'm probably gonna end up getting the KBD BN style ones just because I know those can take a beating. So we'll see how long these last, but I got a screw right here and then I have a zip tie in the back. They're most likely going to fly off on the freeway or something, but they're fiberglass and they're already beat, so yeah. I just wanted to mention that I don't have these fully like secured in how they should be, so that's another reason why as, they, as to why they don't fit. Um, I could push them in, trim them up a little bit and push them in. Uh, to where they should fit, but I just wanted to throw them on just so the car doesn't look so whack with the front bumper So I'm probably gonna make a separate video on just this just because I could never find a video on how to install Side skirts on a low car because everyone that I see on YouTube or just online and stuff like that All their side skirts are like four inches off the ground. So obviously Nothing's ever gonna touch them unless you fly off track which any any side skirts gonna fly off so that's why I'm probably going to make a video on showing you guys how to secure these pretty good, have somewhat decent fitment, yet be pretty much on the ground. Um, so yeah, going over speed bumps is going to be quite fun because there's absolutely no clearance like at all. Like, yeah. One more thing I did on the bumper, which is very ghetto, but it actually works way better than I thought, is I got a bar from a table that broke like just... It was like a, let's say, two inch tall by maybe less than quarter inch um, long foot section. It was probably just a long thing, like, I can't really, can't really explain it. But imagine two inch thick and about 61 inches long, about a quarter of an inch, or if not smaller than that, just like a long bar. Uh, and I found that in my backyard, and uh, I just threw it on, just because the hardware store that I usually go to closes today. Um, so that's why I did this. I was going to do it for the meantime, but it actually works really good and I think I might just keep it um, for as long as I keep this bumper so it's I believe roughly 61 inches I had to do no cutting uh, just bending and I bent it by standing on it and getting a hammer and then I drilled a hole so that's really all you need to make a bracket like this um, but I used there is holes right here on the end of the frame so I just drilled a hole on this it already had a little hole conveniently I just drilled it out bigger put a nut and a bolt with some lock washers on there so it goes from this corner right here you can see 15 inches to about right here and I just bent it I believe 30 inches and then bent it back and it goes back like 15 and a half inches uh, something like that and I did the same thing on this side so you can see it goes like that and it actually picks it up off the ground because it was sitting on the ground you can see I already made a little hole right here from just I'm driving and I wasn't gonna do that support because I thought that you know I was like oh it's a new bumper it's not gonna flex but once I go over like 30 it just folds under the car and that's why it was all scraped up up here so I don't really want to mess up this bumper I know it's kind of hard to mess it up but I didn't want to mess it up more than I should I'm not sure if you guys have noticed but when I post a video when I do a video I take like at least a week and a half or whatever just to make sure that what I'm giving like the information I'm giving you guys is correct because I know in the past when I used to do YouTube videos I would literally do the dumbest stuff and just post it um, and I just leave them on there just to kind of look back and laugh at myself, but uh, I just want to like post actual stuff that, you know, real information. So I didn't just want to post this video and say, oh yeah, the bumper's on, this and that, blah, blah. I wanted to actually drive my car, take it to some dips, and make sure that it's not flying off and everything's good. Uh, and this bar that I put in the bottom, it's actually very nice and sturdy, and I've already hit about 80 in this car, and it doesn't flex at all, so that is good. 
Um, the only problem I'm having right now is with how low this car sits, is this bumper, this quick release bumper bu button, my bad, uh, pops off. And I think that's just because of the angle that it's at. I think the rod is pointing like this way and the button is going that way. So this one pops off, um, this one never pops off. So I ended up putting a zip tie right here on the top bolt hole. So I drill the hole on bumper, put a zip tie here, that way this one holds it just in case this pops off. And then I ended up putting a, another zip tie down here. I just made this one loose. Uh, that way when I hit something or go in a driveway, it has some flex to it because having a bumper um, and a load car really stiff and rigid is not good because imagine putting the whole weight of a car on a bumper. It's just gonna break even if it's KBD. And yeah, this bumper for being how low it is, it's literally like, millimeters off the ground it doesn't scrape at all when I'm driving uh, the side skirts don't scrape unless I hit a big bump on the freeway or something like that going like above 70 that's really the only time it scrapes and obviously going into driveways and stuff like that also my headlights works just as they should uh, I cleared this you can see it's very tight and I still need to file it down make it look nice and pretty but I'll do that once I paint the bumper uh, they go up and down everything works as it should I just need to put those uh, position lights, turn signals, because I don't have front turn signals right now. And sorry it was so long, but like I mentioned, I really just like to give you guys all the information that I know. That way you guys can just watch one video, my video, and be ready to do whatever you gotta do. You don't have to watch 10,000 videos to get a bunch of information from other people. I'm gonna wrap up the video right here, just because I know this video is getting way too long. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.